Okay, in this video we are going to find some Riemann sums and trapezoidal sums from tables of data. So let's get started with that. So here we have a table, uh, t is measured in minutes and v of t is me measured in meters per minute and we want to approximate the integral from 0 to 14 of v of t dt with a left Riemann sum. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, I always start these problems when I'm writing up my solution by rewriting the definite integral. So I'm going to write that. It's really important that we acknowledge we're approximating, so we're gonna use approximately equal to. That's definitely something you wanna be aware of. And now let's just kind of do it. So first, I'm going to find kind of the width of my first interval. So from zero to three, that's three. And then a left Riemann sum, I'm gonna use the left endpoint of the interval. But so kind of the, the value of the function at the left endpoint, so that's gonna be zero in this case. So three times zero, and we're gonna keep going. So plus, find another width, this is two. And then we go for the left endpoint again, which in this case has a value of 120. And now we just kind of keep going through the table. So here we'll have uh, four, and the left endpoint gives me 80. And add, uh, here we'll get three. And the left endpoint gives me 100. And then finally, we have, uh, that's gonna be a width of two. And at the left endpoint, we have a, a function value of 60. And let's, uh, so that's it. Uh, on the AP exam, you could technically leave this. I really don't like that. So I'm gonna simplify it, but I used a calculator. Um, and I got that the definite integral from zero to 14 of V of T DT is approximately 980. And then um, we integrated a function that had units meters per minute um, over minutes. So we should just end up with meters. All right, so when we're doing this, uh, you want to find the width of the interval, and then you want to take the value at the left end point of the interval. Let's do another one now using a right Riemann sum. So we want to approximate definite integral from 4 to 25 of v of t dt with a right Riemann sum. It's a really similar process. Um, it's virtually the same, in fact. So first, we write the definite integral um, so that the person reading it knows what we're actually doing. So integral from four to 25 V of T dt. Now we're gonna use approximately equal to because we're only approximating. Um, so kind of the wavy equal sign there. And now we just go for it. So we're gonna find our width. So the first one is two. And now we need the right endpoint. So that'll be 40 in this case. And plus our new width is three. So I always mark up the tables this way. Um, you should probably read all of the question before you start marking up your table like crazy, um, but you just kind of keep going. So I need the right endpoint here, which would be negative 50, plus uh, this width is five, and our right endpoint is negative 80. And then let's do it again. So we get five again for our width, right endpoint is negative 40. And then finally, uh, we're gonna go that's a six there. And then the right endpoint is 20. All right, so again, we could technically leave it there. You'd want units on your answer, but I'm gonna simplify it anyway. I feel like that gives you a better sense of your answer. Um, so I got that the definite integral from four to 25 of V of T dt is approximately neg negative 550. And then um, the units on this should be meters because if you integrate meters per minute over minutes, you just get meters. Um, so what we did here, same idea. We find the width of the interval, and then after we do that, we take the value at the right endpoint because it's a right Riemann sum. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at is a trapezoidal sum. So we're basically going through the possibilities. So left sum, right sum, trapezoidal sum, and then finally we're gonna do a midpoint sum. Um, so trapezoidal sum now. Approximate the average temperature on zero to 15 with a trapezoidal sum. So our table gives us the temperature at T minutes and it's in degrees Fahrenheit. So what we want to do, so average value of the temperature function would be the average value of H of T. So that's gonna be the integral of H of T from zero to 15 um, over the interval, which is 15 minus zero. So that's what we're approximating. So approximately, I'm gonna pull out a one over 15, which is by far the most common thing that people forget when they're going through this process. Um, you know, they just approximate the definite integral and they forget, you know, the actual problem that they're solving. So I pull out one over 15 and now I'm using trapezoid. So the area of a trapezoid is one half the height times the sum of the bases. So I'm gonna write one half. 
So my first height is gonna be kind of like the width of the interval. So I'm gonna go from here to here, so that's four. So one half the height, and now I need the sum of the bases. So the two bases I'm gonna use are uh, this 250 and this 265, so I'm gonna add those up. And that's our first trapezoid. So now we're gonna to add to that another trapezoid. So it's still gonna be one half, because it's one half the height times the sum of the bases. Say that a lot. Um, so the height is gonna go from four to nine, so it's five. And then the two bases that I use this time are going to be 265 and 310. So I'm gonna add those up. And we'll do it again. So we're gonna keep going until we get all the way through the table. Um, so it's one half, because it's a trapezoid. The height is gonna go from nine to 12, so it's three. And then the sum of the bases. So uh, that's gonna be 310 and 335. Add those up. And we'll do it one more time. So we get plus one half. The distance from 12 to 15 is three. And then the sum of the bases, the bases are 335 and 355, I'm running out of space. And that's uh, the last trapezoid. So I'm gonna close that giant opening parenthesis that I have there, the black one. Um, and then uh, I just use a calculator again. So I'm gonna rewrite the definite integral. So we found uh, 1 15th, the integral from zero to 15, h of t dt. That, by the way, on the AP exam is how they almost always write average value. They almost always pull out that denominator as one over whatever. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I got approximately 298, which looking at the values in the table, seems like it makes sense because I'm trying to find sort of the average of them. There's an infinite number of values and I only know these, but I'm using these to approximate it. So 298 seems reasonable. And then the average value of a function will always have the same units as the function itself. So this will be degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind when you're doing a trapezoidal sum is uh, the area of a trapezoid, one half the height times the sum of the bases. And then after we find all of them, we basically just add them up. So there's two things to look out for. Um, you definitely can factor out the one half, which will make all your calculations a little shorter um, because every trapezoid has a one half in its area formula. One thing you cannot do is you can't count on using a generalization. So um, there's this thing some people memorize, not worth it because the tables that you deal with, um, all the heights will be different. So you have to just basically find each trapezoid individually and add them up. Um, not a bad process. Let's take a look at a midpoint Riemann sum, which uh, is kind of my least favorite for no particular reason. So we have um, a function R of H which is measured in inches. H is also measured in inches. And what we wanna do is approximate this weird integral. We're gonna approximate pi times the integral from zero to 30 of R of H squared dH using a midpoint Riemann sum. Um, and I'll kind of explain briefly at the end what this integral represents, sort of. Um, so we're approximating a definite integral. So the first step is write down the integral that you're approximating. And then it's an approximation. So use an approximately equal to sign. And then uh, don't forget the pi, which is commonly forgotten in this instance, just like that one over 15, uh, any constant multiple you gotta carry through into your approximation. And now what we're gonna do is a midpoint Riemann sum. So uh, I'm going from zero to 30. And if you look, uh, if I go zero to five, I can't find the midpoint of zero and five. Well, I know it's 2.5 is the midpoint, but I don't know the height there or the value of the function. So I have to go from zero to 10 and use five. And then I can go from 10 to 20 and use 15, 20 to 30 and use 25. So the table is set up perfectly for this, and usually the table is. Um, so the first one is going to go from 0 to 10. So that's a, a width of 10. And then uh, what I'm going to do is find the midpoint of that interval, which is 5, and take the height from there. So the height I'm going to use is 9.5. So that's the R value. And then I'm supposed to square that R value. So I get this. Um, and we're just gonna keep doing that. So uh, we're gonna add to that. So we're going from 10 to 20, which is just a width of 10. And then we're gonna go to the midpoint of that, which is 15. The height there is nine. Um, and I'm supposed to take that value and square it. It's as if there's a new function. So um, r squared is its own function and you're really just doing a definite integral of r squared, um, which is why we're gonna square all these values. And again, we're gonna plus uh, from 20 to 30, uh, we get 10. And then uh, we go to the midpoint of that, which is 25. 
and the height there is 8.9. So we're going to take 8.9 and we're going to sub uh, square it rather because that's what we're supposed to do. And that's it. We've covered the entire table. Uh, so I'm going to close a parenthesis. I grabbed a calculator and calculated this and I got um, pi times the integral from 0 to 30. R of h squared dh is approximately 7,868.433. Um, and then it's, uh, so we took R of h and squared it. So inches go to inches squared. And then we multiply by dh, which would have units of inches. So we actually end up with inches cubed here. So this is kind of a volume calculation. And if you think about um, what we're doing, we really have kind of this scenario. So we have like a cylinder and the cylinder uh, has a height of 10 and then a radius of 9.5. And so that's just the first cylinder. And then we would have a second cylinder and a third. And we're just adding up a bunch of cylinders. So it's a very Riemann sum type of thing. It's to add up some shape over and over again. Um, okay, so for this one, what we did was, uh, oh, sorry, and the volume of a, a cylinder is pi r squared h. So that's where everything's coming from. Uh, so what we did, uh, find the width of the interval. So it's a little weird. You have to find the width of the interval, which in our case was always 10. You have to find the midpoint of the interval. So that's still an input value that's in the domain. So we're gonna find the midpoint of the interval, find the height at the midpoint, and that's what you're gonna end up using. Okay, so, um, and then another thing to look out for, you actually might end up skipping some columns, right? So like if there had been a column at h equals 6.5, and then I knew the radius was like 9.4, I just would have skipped that because I was going from zero to 10 and the midpoint of that is five. So that can happen. I wouldn't really expect it to happen on like the AP exam, but you should always be on the lookout for that. Okay, so that's the four types of sums that you end up doing with tables. So left, right, midpoint, and then trapezoidal sums. I hope you found this uh, helpful and good luck.